Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin and I am principal of Simply Improve Health, where, not, where I help people to sleep better, train longer, and get less tired, and enjoy a better quality of life using plant-based products and therapies and simple techniques. Tonight I'm going to be sharing with you uh, um, the highlights of a, an article I had published re recently about aromatherapy and end-of-life care. Um, the article was called A Fragrant Farewell and it's the story of an experience that I had with an elderly client of mine and not only what I experienced with her but what I learned from her um, as a therapist and as a person. Now just to give you a bit of background, the person in question, I'll call her Miss K, was actually not originally a client of mine. It was her, her daughter who was my cl a client for many years. Um, but whenever I went to see um, her daughter, Carol, Miss K, who lived in the house, would always greet me. We'd have a little bit of a chat. And then I'd go on my way and, and do my treatment to, for Carol. However, after a few, several years, uh, Mrs. K's health began to fail. And her daughter came up with the idea that perhaps it would be useful for her to have a course of treatments to see if um, they we could improve or at least maintain her condition for a while longer. But it was obvious that it was the her condition was not going to improve. She was suffering with dementia and a, and a number of um, physical challenges, um, which were complicated by the, the increasing onset of dementia. But um, the purpose wasn't to cure Mrs. K. It was simply to make her more comfortable and, and improve her quality of life for however long she had to live. So. able to, to communicate and, and had cognitive ability, the three of us sat down and we devised a, a plan um, of action, so to speak. Um, I decided to work with um, aromatherapy oils with Miss K, and we determined not only based on her health situation, but on her likes and dislikes, what would be most beneficial for her. So after de determining the different smells and, and tastes and, and um, types of things that she enjoyed, we decided to start with six weeks, um, six weeks of treatment and then assess from there and see how Miss Kay was feeling and whether to continue or not. Well, that six months, six weeks actually evolved into about a year and a half uh, where I was giving Miss K treatments on a, a regular basis. Um, there were a number of things that the, the aromatherapy was able to help with, um, things like confusion as the dementia became more prevalent, um, agitation, muscle weakness. Um, there, as I said, there were a number of of symptoms and problems that were that Miss K was dealing with, and um, I believe that less is more. <laughs> so while I was working at a very subtle level using very low concentrations of essential oils, I was using oils that had maybe multiple purposes, so that I could use maybe just a maximum of three oils, but using them in such a way that. Um, they could cover several bases in terms of um, whatever was going on with Miss K at the time. For example, um, for confusion, use um, essential oils for like rosemary, which I, I must note here, rosemary should not be used indiscriminately. If a person is subject to uh, seizures or epilepsy, they should avoid that rosemary, so that's just a note. Um, but frankincense and lemon also were used uh, for muscle weakness and stiffness. I may have used things like um, lavender, um, rosemary again, bay. 
Um, there were days that Miss K wasn't wasn't doing too well, and she she would become very confused and angry and lash out. Um, though interestingly enough, she never lashed out at me. It was her daughter who took the brunt of of those episodes. Um, I merely had to to show up with my little bottle of oil, um, the blend that I made up for her that particular day, um, based on observation and and what um, Carol would tell me about or her carers. Um, but I would pass the oil under her nose and whatever was going on, however agitated or confused she might have been, um, she would just stop and smile and close her eyes and relax and wait for me to start a treatment. Um, it was really quite a transformation to see that, that all of that tense energy and, and, and heavy energy just dissipate um, as soon as she would smell the oil she would immediately start to relax even before I started the treatment um, but what I learned about in this in this whole process of, of working with Miss K and with her daughter and the carers as well was that um, she was a woman who um, was a self-made woman i mean she came at, with a, as a widow with a with a child uh, from guyana um and built a life for herself built brought a home for herself and made a life for herself here in the uk um and was always a very independent and kind of go-getting kind of person so at the beginning she was very very keen to to have treatment was um because she wanted to, uh, Miss Kay wanted to get her independence back and be able to do things again. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't meant to be. And as she sunk further and further and her health decreased um, more with each day, it became obvious that, that she was sinking. Finally, Miss Kay was moved into a hospice and I continued to work on her during that time. Um, and it was kind of interesting. The nurses would find excuses to come into the room because they would smell the oil and they'd want to know what it was and what was it doing and how was I giving her treatment. Um, so it was it was a um, a time of learning for me, but time of learning for the people around me who um, may have heard of people having treatments or um, in the hospice at least may have seen people from time to time getting treatments, but really didn't understand uh, the power of the treatments that, that Ms. K was actually receiving. Um, for example, as, as I said, um, even when Ms. K was having a really bad day and she was angry and she was confused and lashing out at, um, at her daughter and others around her, the carers perhaps, um, in that confusion, um, simply passing a, a little vial of the oils that I made up for her um, under her nose so that she could smell it because she was she had also losing her sight, um, that would kind of arrest that, that, that rant that was going on, that anger that was being expressed. And she would just, you could see, she could just calm down um, and just smile, close her eyes, and lay back and wait for me to start the treatment. Now, how the treatment was delivered depended on what was going on on the particular day um, that I went to visit Ms. K. For example, in the beginning, she was able to, to sit up and stand. We were able to actually to, uh, with the help of the carers, be able to give Ms. K a full massage. Um, which she really enjoyed. She'd always fall asleep, and and when she was still verbal, she would she would actually say, "I feel good," which was a real plus because as the dementia took hold, um, she became less and less able to communicate, and finally, at 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 certain points, stopped communicating altogether. Um, but as the time went on and she became weaker, we were able to sit, perhaps sit her up in a chair and I was able to do reflexology on her while she was sitting in the chair. When she finally became bed bound and unable to, to get out of bed and it was just too difficult to, to move and turn her, 
um, I started to give her hand reflexology treatments, which were just as effective. Um, she'd still smile, um, close her eyes, and drift off to sleep. Um, and generally had a very good night uh, from the reports that the carers and her daughter would give me the next you know, over the coming days in between treatments. But there was a point where even doing hand reflexology, as, um, as again, as the, her uh, condition deteriorated, and it became really difficult to give Ms. K treatment, and she was often sleeping, um, I would leave the oils with the carers or with her daughter um, for them to put in an um, electric burner uh, so that at least even though she was sleeping and not actually physically having treatment, the aromatherapy oils were still working um, because the sense of smell is our oldest um, sense. It's the first sense to develop. Um, children need, and babies in the womb can actually smell um, I mean, in a sense, their environment, what's coming through their amniotic sac. So that um, it's the last sense that we lose as well. Uh, so that even as Miss K became less and less able to communicate, less and less able to be aware of her, of her surroundings as the dementia took hold, um, she always responded to the oils. Even to the very end, she would be responded to the oils. And her smile would say it all. She would just close her eyes and smile and just have her treatment. But time went on, things wound down, and finally, um, Miss K was put into a hospice. And for the last few months of her life, I worked in, with her on, at the hospice. And as I said, the nurses loved coming in and constantly, you know, <laughs> asking questions about what was those nice scents that <laughs> that I was spreading around the <laughs> her room. But there came a point where even uh, Miss Kay's daughter's voice she no longer responded to. She was totally unresponsive. She was really, really on her way. And there came a day where I knew that it was the last time that I would work, be working with her. And I made a special blend for that, for that day. It was um, Rose, uh, Angelica, and Neroli, which are all oils that have a very high vibration um, and open up the crown chakra um, to spirit. And I you use that oil and again the, the the nurses and attendants kept flitting through the room um to to stand and kind of witness i think because uh, about a week maybe two weeks after that miss k passed away and i'd like to think that she passed away in this this lovely fragrant farewell um because i tried to make it as her her experience even as she was losing her senses and losing touch with the world to make her experience as pleasant and peaceful as possible. And I like to think that I did that. Um, as I said, that even when she no longer was able to speak and tell me how she was feeling, um, the, the smile on her face just said it all. And it was just such a pleasure and a privilege to have worked um, with Miss Kay for, for that period of time. But what it taught me, um, not only uh, how to deliver uh, treatments um, in different ways and different modalities, but also I learned to really um, how to look at the whole person. And that was the reason why I became a therapist in the first place, was because I wanted to be able to work with the entire person. As, it, as I started with that, this conversation, I said that Miss Kay was a person with, you know, was a hard worker, um, self-starter. She was a, um, a homemaker and a mother, but she was also a businesswoman. And she um, had many happy memories growing up in Guyana. And some of that was even reflected in the oils that I used. 
for example, I used um, citrus oils like lemon and orange um, and neroli, which is orange possum, um, which and with the uh, other oils like um, nutmeg and bay, which may have reminded her at some level of her growing up years in, in Guyana. But it was about knowing what she liked and disliked and what um, her history was, what her journey through life was, actually made it easier for me to be able to treat uh, Miss Kay with the different oils in accordance to, to her mood, her likes, and her dislikes, as well as respecting her, her physical condition. As I stated earlier, I worked at very, very low concentrations, 1% or less, which is literally just a couple of drops, just um, A, not to be able to interfere with um, any medication, but also because her um, the liver whether you're talking about aromatherapy oils or strong medication, the liver sees it all as poison and it's trying to process it and get rid of it. So the less burden you put on the system with other stuff, the better. So, which is why I worked at such low concentrations. And also, I was working at an energetic level, a more spiritual level, because Miss Kay wasn't going to get better. We knew that. I mean, her her illnesses were many. She was elderly, and the dementia was was gathering up, gathering pace um, with each day. So it was a matter of really keeping her comfortable, keeping her happy, which I believe we did. Um, like I said, that smile. You know, that's the one thing I remember most about Miss Kay was her smile. It was just absolutely radiant, um, and that, when I look back on this this particular um, case study, I have to smile too because I learned so so much with Miss K, um, and she did it with grace and style. And even on her very bad days, uh, as I said, she never directed that that frustration and anger and confusion at me because. Even when she couldn't remember who I was and she would smell the oil in her head would kind of cock to one side as if she was trying to remember something but couldn't quite make it. But the oils um, spoke to her, even through all of the confusion and deterioration. Um, and as I said, I like to think that in the end, um, she went peacefully and on a very, very fragrant cloud, and a very fragrant farewell. And I just wanted to share that story with you today because it, it, um, people think that complementary therapies, things like aromatherapy, are just like these nice things. But as a therapist who worked 15 years in local communities um, delivering various complementary therapies to people, I, I, I learned that um they it was that human element it wasn't just the the oils or the acupuncture or what yoga or whatever it was we were offering it was that human contact that taking the time to learn who they were was the real key ingredient um just a little bit of love maybe <laughs> if you want to look at it that way but I wanted to share that with you today, give you something to think about. And if, if you've liked anything you've heard, throw in some love hearts or some a thumbs up or, or leave a comment. Um, if you have any questions about anything you've heard today, whether about aromatherapy or end-of-life care or anything else, you can just drop me a line. Um, the contact details will be um, up on the post once this 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 live ends so you can have an if you have any questions or have any comments just bring them on i'm happy to listen and happy to respond thanks for listening thanks for joining me thank you harry thank you marcia <laughs> thanks everyone for listening and hopefully i'll see you again next week on thursday and i'll sure to have something delicious for you to listen to then Take care and have a great evening and a great week. Bye-bye. <laughs>